Shalom, brothers and sisters. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from Yahuwah the Father and Yahusha the Messiah, his son. Hear, O Yasharal, Yahuwah our mighty one is one Yahuwah. This is Brother David coming to you again to bring you the law, statutes, judgments, and commandments of Yahuwah. And we're starting today from Deuteronomy chapter 18. Listen. Because we are studying the law, now we can see some things, right? You were supposed to take any judgment that is rendered upon the children of Yashara, and I'm practicing that name. If I mess up and I say, Israel, please forgive me, but I'm practicing putting that in and changing my speech so that it should be Yashara, Yashara light. Now, if you are a Yasharolite, you were supposed to bring all judgment to the priests, to the Levites, and to the judges. And they were supposed to render sentence. And whatever sentence that they gave, you were supposed to accept it. You were not supposed to have a stranger lording anything over you or punish you. The people who were supposed to punish you are your own brethren. They were the ones who were supposed to pick up the stones and stone you to death. If you understand that, you see that the priests, the scribes, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees, in the days of our Mashiach, they violated the law. Do you see that? They turned our Mashiach over to the Europeans, a stranger, a foreigner, for judgment. You cannot do that according to the law, brothers and sisters. I just want you to see how they have transgressed our father's laws. They did it right in front of us. And we didn't know. Because we didn't study the laws, the statutes, the judgments and commandments. When we finish going through this. You will not be able to be fooled anymore by anyone because you will know exactly what Yahuwah wants from you. Let's begin. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 1 to 5. The priests, the Levites, and all the tribes of Levi shall have no part nor inheritance with Yasharal. They shall eat the offerings of Yahuwah made by fire and his inheritance. Verse 2. Therefore shall they have no inheritance amongst their brethren. Yahuwah is their inheritance, as he have said unto them. So that you can understand what he's talking about here. Everything that you give unto Yahuwah, all of your tithe, all of your offering, all of your gifts, all of your vows, who did they go to? The Levites. Verse 3. And this shall be the priest's due from the people, from them that offer a sacrifice, whether it be ox or sheep, and they shall give unto the priest the shoulder and the two cheeks and the maw. Hey, those are the good parts, man. The maw is the stomach part. Verse 4, what else are they supposed to receive? The first fruits of your corn, the first fruits of your wine, the first fruits, the best of the best of thine oil, and the first of the fleece of thy sheep shalt thou give them. Verse 5, listen to this, brothers and sisters. For Yahuwah thy mighty one have chosen him out of all thy tribes. Who chose Levi? Yahuwah, to stand to minister in the name of who? Yahuwah, him and his sons forever. Stop. When you give unto the Levite, you give unto Yahuwah. Do you understand? It's the only way to give unto him. You have to give it to the Levites. And he has to receive the best of the best of the best. You cannot give them slop. Note. We don't know who the Levites are today. 
But remember, it says he's chosen them to minister in the name of Yahuwah, him and his sons, forever. When you give unto the Levite, you're giving unto Yahuwah. We don't know who they are. But the Israelite brothers in these camps say the Levites are the Haitians. <laughs> Why aren't they giving unto them? This is forever, brothers and sisters. Forever means forever, even in the lands of your captivities. Can you change this? If you've identified who the Levite is, there is no reason that they should be over there in Haiti, starving the way they are today, and you've identified who they are. Verse 6, And if a Levite come from any of thy gates, out of all Israel, sorry, Yasha Raw. You see that? I messed up already. <laughs> but listen, here it is again. With your gates. Landlords. Where he sojourned. And come with all the desire of his mind unto the place which Yahuwah shall choose. Verse 7. Then he shall minister in the name of Yahuwah his mighty one. As all his brethren, the Levites, do. Which stand there before Yahuwah. Verse 8. They shall have like portions to eat, besides that which cometh of the sale of his patrimony. Verse 9. When thou art come into the land which Yahuwah thy mighty one giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. <sighs> Isn't it great that our Mashiach is going to cleanse the land? Because this is what we do. This is how we've messed up. We leave, we go away from Yahuwah and follow these other gods. The only way that this can happen is because the people are not familiar with the law. I, I want you to understand that. They're not familiar with the law. Verse 10. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter pass through the fire, that's Moloch or Cheon, or that useth divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch all of these things are forbidden you can't go to a seer to try to find out what's going to happen in your future verse 11 or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer you can look all these things up for yourself and see what they're all about. But it's all about witchcraft. You cannot have any of this stuff in the kingdom, brothers and sisters. Why? Verse 12. For all that do these things are an abomination unto Yahuwah. And because of these abominations, Yahuwah thy mighty one doth drive them out from before thee. Oh. Hey. No death penalty? Just drive them out? No jail? Yahuwah doesn't do that. Verse 13. Thou shalt be perfect with Yahuwah thy mighty one. How can you be perfect if you don't know the law? That's what we're going through this for. Verse 14. For these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observers of times and unto diviners, but as for thee, Yahuwah thy mighty one have not suffered thee so to do. You're not to do this. Listen to these observers of times. Why didn't they know that Yahuwah was coming with his children to break down their walls, their strongholds, and take the kingdom? Why weren't they warned? Hm. Verse 15. Yahuwah thy mighty one will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. Who do you think that prophet is? The, the Muslims say that it's Muhammad. <laughs> Look what he says. He's going to raise up a prophet from the midst of of his brethren, Israelites, or, forgive me, Yasharolites. 
like unto me. Moses says, he's going to be like me. What was Moses? A lawgiver. Unto him, ye shall hearken. So this is a prophetic word to tell you of the coming of your Messiah. Listen in verse 16 why he's going to do this. According to all that thou desirest of Yahuwah, thy mighty one in Horeb, in the day of the assembly, saying, listen what they desire now. Let me not hear again the voice of Yahuwah, thy mighty one. You remember this, right? Neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. Verse 17. And Yahuwah said unto me, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. Verse 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, someone that they won't be afraid of. Like unto thee, Moses, he's going to be a lawgiver like you, and I'm going to put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak them, all that I shall command him. What did he speak? He came to expound on the law. What did he say in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 through 19? Don't you think or put it in your mind that I've come to abolish or destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill. Listen to this. Till heaven and earth pass, not one dot or tittle shall pass from the law to all be fulfilled. Has heaven and earth passed away? That means, brothers and sisters, you have to keep this law. Because you are the children of Yasha Ra, and you have to follow instructions if you want to make it into the kingdom. Verse 19, and it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Hey, disobedience brings forth the penalty. Everyone who is in the church are going to suffer the penalty. Why? Because they said that this Jesus, who they call upon, he abolished the law by his death on that cross. If you have no law, brothers and sisters, you have no salvation. Let me just be clear with this. No law, no salvation. The, the promises Everything that the father said that he's going to give to the children of Israel is connected to an action. Love him with all your heart, mind, and soul. Keep these commandments. If you don't do this, you get the penalty. The persons who will not hearken unto the words that our Mashiach will speak, they shall get the penalty. Verse 20. But the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Now, we've seen the real prophet. You know, verse uh, 19, 18, 17, 16, Yahusha, our Messiah. The Father sent him to speak unto us. He told us to hearken unto every word that he speaks. But here we have a false prophet that just came up. The Father did not command him to speak. And he's speaking in the name of other gods. Look at the penalty. Death. Now in the church, prophecy is big. If you advertise that Prophet Boo Boo is coming in, Prophet Boo Boo is well known. Everyone will flock to the church to hear a word from Prophet Boo Boo. Because they believe that he is speaking in, on behalf of Yahuwah. But Prophet Boo Boo is speaking on behalf of Jesus. That's who they speak on behalf of in the church. If Prophet Boo Boo was in the kingdom, <laughs> he wouldn't last long, would he? Verse 21. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which Yahuwah have not spoken? You don't even have to say it with your lips. 
He's looking at your heart. He has already discerned what you're thinking. Here's your answer. Verse 22. When a prophet speaketh in the name of Yahuwah, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which Yahuwah have not spoken. But the prophet have spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. That is a commandment. Hey, let me give you an example. Remember Are Yah, Tazadak Yah's mentor? He said in the year 2000 that our Mashiach was going to return and kill all white people. This is 2019. Did that happen? You see what I'm saying? In the kingdom, Arya, what would happen to him? You see the last part of verse 20, even that word means indeed that prophet shall die. The father's not playing with this and he's telling you what to look for. But the last part of 22, thou shalt not be afraid of him, is very revealing. When the prophet comes, you have to fear him. No one was happy to see a prophet when he came in their regions. Do you know why? Because he brought judgment. He was speaking the oracles of the mighty one. The people were afraid. They knew that they transgressed the law. They hid themselves from the prophet. They didn't go running to the prophet. So the people were afraid of him because they knew he was coming to speak on behalf of Yahuwah. But the false prophet, when you see people running to them, you know something's up, don't you? You see, this is how you identify who the real prophets are and who the false prophets are. The false prophets will have huge congregations because they're speaking things that the people like to hear. <laughs> but the real prophet speaks the oracles of the mighty one. We've been going through the law, this Deuteronomy. Do you think that anyone likes to hear what we've read so far in Deuteronomy? No, they do not. In the kingdom, brothers and sisters, you won't have this evil amongst you. Now, let me tell you what a prophet looks like so that you can identify them. Anyone who is reading and teaching you the law, they are speaking on behalf of Yahuwah. What did your Moshiach come to do? What did your Moshiach come to do? He came to expound on the law. Continue to chapter 19. Shalom.